as we saw in the second stanza we get to see what the classroom is like what the things what are the things that are on the classroom walls and why they are uh, such absurd things why because they stand in absolute contrast to the kind of world the students are living in and will probably live in the future so let's read the second paragraph again on sour cream walls donations so the first thing there are donations shakespeare's head cloudless at dawn civilized dome riding all cities so we have shakespeare and everything that he represents all the civilization all the heroes that he has produced in his work we have belled flowery tyrellis valley so we have a picture of a very beautiful tyrellis valley and then we have an open handed map awarding the world its world we have another map which is awarding the world its world and yet for these children these windows not this map their world where all their futures painted with the fog a narrow street sealed in with a lead sky far far from rivers capes and stars of world despite uh, putting all these things in the classroom the world of these children is limited to that of a slum which has which doesn't have a clear sky but has a sky which is painted with fog which is also representative of the future which is very blurry which is very tainted in a way and it is very it is uh, like a narrow street with a lead sky which is far away from all these rivers all the good things that we can imagine and hope for in our dreams now we move on to the third paragraph where he is continuing where he is describing how inherently angry he is surely shakespeare is wicked the map a bad example with ships and sun as we discussed earlier the first line itself the shakespeare is a bad example for these children they do, they, they don't need to learn, know what shakespeare is and what kind of heroes he has because their world is completely limited to the map that is their slum with ships and sun with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal because if they read shakespeare's stories they will have uh, stories of ships that where people went from one part of the world to the other and we have stories of the sun we have stories of the lo- of love between two people uh, that they have time to love romance as that is so if they will have such things they they will have knowledge of such things while reading shakespeare it will tempt them to steal it will tempt them to also have such riches it will also tempt them to have such things and they would go to any extent and the only th- uh, possible way for them to get these things is to is through bad means is through stealing right they don't have the resources that they can have such experiences that heroes of shakespeare is having so they will eventually resort to wrong or incorrect means in order to achieve these things that is why giving such examples to such children is wrong because for lies that means their lies that turn slyly in their cramped holes from fog to endless night because their lies are not free like the lies of shakespeare's heroes their lies are just turning that means slyly without them knowing slyly very careful very cleverly turning in their cramped holes that is their homes which are so cramped they are like holes from fog that means from a blurry future to an endless night that means to a disappointing dark and bleak future which is endless night is always representative of something which is dark something that we don't see then something that we don't like and if that is endless and their future is only oscillating from fog to endless night okay from endless night to fog so their lives are just turning and turning in their cramped holes in that slum in their little homes that they are removing from fog to endless light and they will never be able to go and achieve the things that shakespeare's heroes or shakespeare's characters were achieving so it is shakespeare is definitely a bad example so this was that idea this this whole idea in yellow is being representation is being a, is a representation of why shakespeare is a bad example for these children on their slag heap slag heap is uh, so this is uh, what a map looks like and uh, if a map uh, 
uh, is representative of all the places that Shakespeare's heroes were going, then these children will definitely go to steal things. So this is slag heap. This is a, a waste product that is left after uh, uh, all the raw material has been processed. Okay, so something like that. On that slag heap, these children were skins peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel. So on their slag heap, that means on their in the, their bodies are like waste product that has been left after everything has been taken. All the nutrition, because all the nutrition, all the muscles, all the energy has been taken away, has been sucked out of their lives. That is why their bodies are just slag heap now. And these children are, see this is a very, very beautiful, very powerful imagery. That they wear skins. So the skin is not on them as a part of the body. They're, it looks like they're wearing these, this, wearing the skin, which is peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel. So the bones are very, very visible in someone's body who is malnutrition. So this is the same imagery that the poet is trying to show us that these students, these children are so undernourished that this, they, it feels like they're wearing those skins on top of their bones. And they're also wearing spectacles of steel. So some steel is, spectacles of steel are like really, really uh, heavy to wear. So with mended glass, so they're wearing spectacles of steel. So they don't have those resources that they will have uh, such good fiber light uh, weight goggles or uh, spectacles. And they also don't have the money to have their glass that is to get new glasses because there was a crack in the previous one. So they're just wearing a, a spectacle made of mended glass, which also looks like bottle bits on stone which is just shining from everywhere so if you break a bottle bit if you break a bottle and you on a stone so the the in the way the stones shine uh, the glass shines on that uh, stone this is exactly what the spectacles of these students look like and spectacles of steel with mended glass like bottle bits on stones all of their time and space are foggy slum. So all of their time, 24-7 of their life and space in, in the space that they live around is a foggy slum. They are never getting out of this foggy slum. So now he's angry. Now he's just asking them that so blot their maps with slums as big as doom. So now here the, the anger is erupting. He's coming out and just saying bad things saying so if, if you are angry if you are extremely irritated by something so what do you do you you say that i am in such a bad condition so if something worse also comes on to me i am fine with that so here also the poet is saying so the map that you gave them in the classroom the world map so since you cannot provide for these students to ever go out of this slum you don't are not giving them any resources to to move out of this slum so instead what you do is blot their maps so instead of uh, having a world map in which there are countries you you blot that map with slums because that is the only place they are going to ever survive in in their whole life as big as doom doom is obviously the end of the world something like that so so he's asking them that their world should end in slums so blot their map blot means to put a huge amount of uh, ink on something so that is a blot so he's asking the, the that map to be blotted with slums as big as doom so this is a representative image of of a classroom something like that here also you can see certain things which are pasted on the walls the the, the off white sour cream color of the wall is also visible shows how neg how with neglect this wall has been treated and these windows are the only things that these students can look out of and they cannot ever imagine of leaving their that world that they live in and to move out of that poverty and shakespeare if you're going to teach shakespeare to such students it is obviously going to be a bad example for them because they will never be able to dream of things that are written in Shakespeare. So that is a, a representative image of what the poet must have been seeing and why he was writing such things. 
Now we move on to stanza four. Now he's asking. Now he is hopeful that you, unless governor, inspector, visitor, he stops there. This map becomes their window, and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs break or oh break open till they break the town and show the children to green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books the white and green leaves open history theirs whose language is the sun so the poet here is hopeful that if these big people if these people in power if these people of influence like the governor the inspector and the visitor do something then this map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon these lives their lives like catacombs what are catacombs these are catacombs i uh, we've uh, read about catacombs that this is where uh, people were buried in earlier times in, in that chapter called uh, on tut tutan khamen in class 11 we have seen what catacombs are this is where these people were buried so unless the governor and inspector do something this map is the only thing that will be their whole world will, will become their window and these windows that shut upon these their lives like catacombs break open break or break open till they break the town so now he's giving them a message of hope that break open these windows get out of this slum get out of this life try to do whatever they can break or break open till they break the town and show the children to green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands so now again hopeful the poet is hopeful that he wants these children to get out of this slum get out of this foggy dark bleak slum which is just like a narrow street and they all they can do is turn in their cramped holes he wants them to get out of this he wants them to break out of this and then go to see the green fields that are out there and make their world run azure on gold sands so uh, azure means uh, like in a in a open bright blue sky on gold sands that means near a beach so they they should be allowed they should be shown those things and let their tongues run naked into books so don't hamper any education is what this line actually means let them get as much knowledge as possible the white and green leaves open history theirs whose language is the sun so let them know as much let them get a get the best of education so because the poet knows that is the only way these people can actually become history become uh, someone of influence become someone of importance in this life otherwise there is no chance for them to become anything or to even come out of this slum so again unless the ins- governor inspector or the visitor do something about this this map is going to become their window and this is the only place the blotted map and they will not be able to go anywhere and these windows will shut upon so these catacombs as we catacombs as we see they, they are shut they are right uh, so if you shut them this is where this is your whole existence then so this will be the whole existence so these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs so these windows are actually restricting them into a catacomb into a place which is of confinement so he wants them to break or break open till they break the town and show the children to green fields to let them go out and make their world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books let them get as much educa- educated as possible the white and green leaves open history theirs whose language is the sun that means whose language is boundless that means they have they can have as many ideas as possible if you are educated if you have a lot of knowledge that is when you can actually change the world and create history so this is what the last paragraph was which was very hopeful which was full of optimism the poet is asking that these children are also capable of doing such things only if you let them break open and only if you let their tongues run naked into books show them those green fields only it will only happen if the governor inspector and the visitor do something about it and don't just give these children into neglect So I hope all of you have understood this. 
it's this, this these two standards are standards are related and uh, the fourth paragraph is where the poet is ending on a positive note which as he should and is always hopeful that these children will come out of their poverty will actually make history thank you